going on, people? How is everybody this morning? In today's vlog, we're going to do some interesting things. We're gonna go see a personal collection, and then we're gonna go to a museum. Now, first off, the personal collection uh, belongs to a gentleman, a friend of mine named Gary Wales. Many of you know Gary. Uh, you've seen him at car shows. He's got lots of really interesting cars. Well, we're gonna go over to his house, and we're gonna check out his collection. Pretty excited about that. Then after that, we are going all the way up to Oxnard to the Mullen Museum, the French car museum and there's a private event that's happening there up there i'm not really sure exactly what it's all about but it should be a lot of fun we're going to meet up with david neal and with rick white from the santa barbara woody club and we're going to do the french car thing ho 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 Jack Frost part of it. Yeah. I, I liked him, but I, I didn't pursue anything with automobiles. She's the one that got me in. She yeah, but what, what you do is not like a guy that collects cars, like a guy who goes in an auction and has 50 cars and things like that. What you do is a creative process that's very unusual. Yeah, I, that's what I do. It's what, that's what gives me satisfaction, yeah. is to take something that has people look at it and say, what are you going to do with that? Horrible thing. I turn it into a work of mobile art. It makes it desirable. Sure. And I hope to see how how it does in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. Sounds interesting. couple ways that I got into cars. One when I was about, I think I was 12 or 13, and we were in high school, and we had a, a, a class, that they, and they took us to Greenfield Village in Dearborn for Henry, you know, Henry Ford's Greenfield Village. And it just co happened to coincide with the Rolls-Royce 
national meet. They were having it there. And so they said, okay, catch, you've got an hour, go out there and check on the cars all you want. I got about three cars and I saw this one car, my eyes went like, I've never seen anything like it in my life, man. My, my heart went boom, 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 boom. You know, when you see the right woman, that type of thing. And I went, I'm sitting there drooling on this car, looking at it for about five minutes. Finally, this old guy comes up, about 30 years old, <laughs> and he says, you like that car, kid? I said, yes, sir, I sure do. And he, he, he said, "Can I? would you like to know about it? I said, ah, yes, I would. He, anyhow, he tells me the whole story of this car. And I'm, I'm, I'm so excited, man. It was like, this is something. This guy's spending time with me, some dumb kid that doesn't know shit from Shinola, and he's spending time with me, and he's telling me about this, this beautiful aberration city in front of me. And so we spent about 15 minutes, and when we left, I said, you know, he's, I, he had my name, and I asked him, I said, may I have your name, sir? And he said, yeah, he said, my name is Jack Frost. I said, Jack Frost? And I'm thinking to myself, this is the guy that puts all those marvelous things on my window glass in the winter. That's how I remember Jack Frost. That was the guy. Right, now fast forward 20 some odd years. I am now, that, that, that got me interested in cars a little bit, okay? Then, on my came back to California after the military. I'm kind of screwing us up. I got out out of the military in 1960, and I came back to Detroit and I became a stockbroker. And uh, it was kind of an interesting, interesting field. Again, uh, I was the absolute last stockbroker ever to be a New York stockbroker that didn't have a college education. And I, I, I thought that was kind of cool. And I worked with a major company, William C. Roney, and right in downtown Detroit. Anyhow, a friend of mine said, I got my girlfriend's, got a girlfriend, and maybe you'd like to meet her. And I'm, I'm yeah, I can do that. And so they introduced me to this lady. And so I thought, well, I better impress this gal. So I take her to Bobolo, the Bablo boats went out around in, in Canada, around Bablo Island, and came back. And they, and I was entertaining on board. And I got up and I sang and I did. I impressed the hell out of her. And of course, they did what all people do when you're young: you get stupid and you drink way too much. So on the way home, to really impress her, I crashed the car to John C. Lodge Freeway, spattered it all to hell. And that night, coming home on the bus with her from the hospital, we're both banged up, and I'm feeling like such a total nerd, and I'm trying to, you know, excuse myself, and I said, well, you know, if I'd have had a car that handled better, that wouldn't have happened. And she says, you know what, she says, I'll pick you up in the morning. I said, my a friend of mine has this car that you might like. We go over there, and she picks me up, we go over there in the morning, and there's a guy in a scene, it's one of those things that you never forget, it's one of those, Guy is out there in an Air Force jumpsuit, a grayish jumpsuit, polishing this fire engine red Allard L4 with a Granatelli Hemi in it, a big fire dome V8 in it. I fell in love with that car instantly. So anyhow, I ended up having the car for 10 years and the, and the woman, I had her for over 50 years. She passed away a few years ago. So, what, so the cars that are being built in the back right now, mm -hmm. how much of of, uh, do you involve yourself in the actual build process? Yeah, Andreas. Like, Andreas and I have been kind of partners for yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. He's he's the the genius behind the mechanical. Yeah. That's his big deal. And your mind is aesthetic. I I can look at a, a terrible old wreck as evidenced by the car that was in a mudslide fire and buried, mm -hmm. and I visualize it. I see it completely done. Every bling 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 thing to it. All I can do is add to that. So all this process is to take it from this and put it here. All that is that simple. I just have that just takes time. And no matter what condition they're in, Andreas can make them run and I can make them beautiful. And we remember we make them into works of art. What I really enjoy doing is when I pull into a car show, you get two reactions. 
One from the people that you're going to be competing against is, oh shit, there's this guy again. And the other one from the people that are looking at going, look at that. Because it's bigger than life, I put all the bling bling into it. And I talk to the people. This 14 liter, 900 cubic inch is just about half the size of the original Beast of Turin. We just mocked up things on it. These are the lights. I put the best of absolutely everything. These are over 100 years old. Everything on this is 100 years old. So when people see it, they say, it's got to be the real thing. It is the real thing. I wrapped it, all the springs with rope. This is was done in the turn of the century, like on Wiltshire Boulevard. And, and, and where the 405 is, they used to be a board track there. And they would race on these boards, but it was so rough that if the spring broke, a piece go behind you, kill the guy behind you, or they really bad luck, and he'd get you when you come around him. So they wrap all their springs with, with rope. Your, the current build, the thing you're working on, what is this thing? This is, this is my, my salute to the uh, great racing cars of the heroic age, which is the Beast of Turin is my favorite car of all time, and the one that's inspired all my builds with La Bistione. It was so larger than life, and it did so much. It's, it's, it's the ultimate car to me. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the motor in this one? This is only 14 liters. Oh. The Beast of Turin, <laughs> and then six cylinders. The Beast of Turin had four cylinders. Yeah. It had 28 and a half liters. Wow. <laughs> but this is going to weigh about 7,000 pounds when it's done. Yeah, 7,000, give or take 500. And you'll have it done by this weekend, right? Oh, of yeah. course. <laughs> you want to ride before you go? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> you'll always find me with my car. I don't sit back and wait for people to, uh-uh. I'm there giving out cards, talking to people, especially the young guys, because it changed my life. It made that one instant change my life to the best thing that could possibly ever happen. And that gave me the world of cars. And what's, what, a, what a lovely way to go.